Christmas, we wish you a Irish Christmas. We wish you a Irish Christmas. Dancer, we wish you a Irish Christmas. We wish you 
Shua are Christmas, and we Shua are Christmas, and that's what we hear. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. And a that's how we hear. Me say Santa, 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 Santa. If you want to call it, they call it Santa's helper. If you want to call it, they call it Christmas tree. Yeah. If you want to call it, they call it my function. Stay connected through the link each morning on Breeze 93.9 FM. Zalzanmalak 
Tuesday, Viva! Viva! Mo- morning, Sabrina. Good morning. What's up, Jason? Good morning, my friend. Good morning. All right. Joe, sir, good morning. How's that? KUAM Care Force. Care up! <laughs> <laughs> yep, it's uh, Giving Tuesday. We've got a whole big uh, day, really, uh, for you guys. As, um, we celebrate another one. Rain or shine, pandemic or not. Giving Tuesday, going to keep on giving, Bree. Certainly are, and we're inviting you to join in this spirit of giving. Uh, we're having our drive through donation right here at our Harmon Studios from 8 a.m. to 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Mm-hmm. We are collecting canned goods and toys for our children, so please stop on by. We'd love to see you and say hello. Yeah, please make it a thing, you know what I mean? Drop the kids off at school, maybe leave a little early. Mm-hmm. Maybe come by lunch, maybe right after school. I don't know. Make it a thing. Come by, swing by, bring some canned goods. Uh, Tis the season, Jason. This is what, the sixth Giving Tuesday? We've been doing it so long. I forgot. Uh, Yeah. Sorry. (laughs) I don't even know which one it is. Uh, I think fifth fifth was last year. And each one has uh, just gotten better every year. I kind of missed out on last year's. uh, I was here, but then I had to leave, but I'm ready to go. Right. I love your outfit today, Bree. Thank you. I love your shirt. I like your um, your mask. Christmas. Yes. It's Chris. It's kind of like got this Mortal Kombat Christmas vibe, Jay. I don't know if you're feeling that, right? 
finish them. <laughs> so we're there, is that right, Jeff? Yeah, that's how you do it. Just like that. <laughs> so we're well I'm gonna you be You can combine Mortal Kombat and, and Giving Tuesday, I would think. It's like Sabrina, finish him. Flawless charity. <laughs> Uh, it's 6.25, so... Flawless I'm, philanthropy. I love the way you guys have jokes. <laughs> yeah, I know. We can't take them, though. We could, Jay and I can dish it out, but when it comes to taking the jokes, it's always the people who dish it out that can't take it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm leaving but, a little early. I'm going to be going all around uh, today. Wow, my schedule for Giving Tuesday? Whoo. Dude, please watch the road, though, man. I'm going to be putting on the miles this morning, Bree. Thanks. You're welcome. I feel like I'm doing the uh, advanced uh, scouting for Santa Maria Comelin <laughs> <laughs> because I'm I'm going to well, I'm starting off in Anigua Custom Fitness and I'm heading down to uh, the Agate Mayor's office and I'm going to Mount Carmel for their big uh, Giving Tuesday. I just want to shout out Mount Carmel because they have been yep. really big every year, no matter who they got down there. Uh, they always have a huge, huge um, presentation for Giving Tuesday, and I'm so excited to go down there and hug it. Yeah, I wish I could go with you. You can. What's stopping you? Come on down. We have a live show. That I know. We're doing. I'm just kidding. Right, so. <laughs> so I'm going to be going uh, there, and then uh, tell me more about this cookies thing. So we have American Bakery. We've got uh, Guam Bakery. They made these donations uh, that we're going to be dropping off to our mayor's offices right. and so we're going to be doing that um the reporters they've got their assignments as well as yourself um heading on over and just saying thank you to our frontliners our mayors and we all know how hard they work and their employees their staff um we should follow up whether or not they got their COVID differential pay but through everything they have been there and and like in every disaster they're always uh on the front line and sometimes even before, uh, you know, battle starts, right. they're, they're up there preparing, getting ready. And we also have uh, Papa John's. Uh, they donated several pizzas that we're going to be picking up. Yeah, that we're going to be picking up. And we're going to be dropping it off to the frontliners over at Guam Regional Medical City and the Guam Memorial Hospital. And I think there's no words. I don't even need to explain yeah. <laughs> what they do and what they have done throughout this pandemic. And we're forever grateful Amen. to them. Um, I also wanted to, because we're talking about the mayors, uh, I wanted to shout out uh, Jotney Mayor uh, Bill Kenga, because there was a, uh, some of the boys from Jotney had asked me, hey, can you shout out uh, the mayor? Because they had uh, done a big uh, street light replacement over there by Emmy Lujan, awesome. and the street lights have been down for a while. So uh, just another example of, uh, you know, when you, get some, when you need something done in the village, you don't call the governor. Well, maybe you do, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> most of the time you call your mayor yeah. right uh and hey, brie i just want to take a second before we get into giving tuesday here uh because you know giving tuesday it is all about giving and i wanted to uh recognize a friend of mine's uh father brie i, I should have given you a heads up about this a uh, perfecto hilado as uh he's retiring today he's he's retiring uh after 38 years over at the cabras uh, marine uh corporation and his daughter says that in 38 years of service over there, he has never called in sick for a single day. And so when you talk about uh, Giving Tuesday and uh, giving back, here is an 83-year-old man who's celebrating his retirement today, Perfecto, Mr. Perfecto Gelato. Uh 38 years on the job, never called in sick. If that's not the spirit of Giving Tuesday, uh, where you give of yourself to benefit others, uh, then I don't know what it is. So thank you so much, uh, Mr. Hilato. That's coming from your uh, Cabras family at uh, 629 Tuesday, November 30th. Giving Tuesday uh, starts now. And we've got a great big show, like uh, Bree said for you. Uh, we've also got the link as well. Uh, we're going heavy on the Giving Tuesday, uh, starting at 830, right? Yeah, starting at 830, we're going to be uh, doing a live show from our drive through donation. We're going to be checking in with Chris. Uh, as he makes his way down to Mount Carmel because they always have a an amazing performance yeah. and presentation of the donations. Uh, we've got uh, Senator Talina Nelson coming by who's doing a resolution, Lieutenant Governor. We've got a special message from him. He's also doing a resolution presentation at 1030 uh, from Adeloupe. It's a virtual presentation, so wow. we're um, appreciative of uh, th th Adeloupe and the legislature participating in Giving Tuesday. Um, we've also got a number of people that are going to be stopping by. Salvation Army, of course, is one of the 
beneficiaries of the canned goods and the toys that are going to be um, donated by you and our community. Right. We're making it super easy for you by opening our doors for you to just drive by and drop off a, a gift. And please know that it's going to families that really need our help. Yeah, the need is great this year, as it is uh, every year. But, of course, uh, with just all the different circumstances from the pool ending to many just being jobless. Mm-hmm. Um, and you guys know, I mean, the economy is not what uh, it should be. And there are a lot of people who are falling through the cracks. And so this is our way. Uh, and I think this year, uh, you know, we, we probably said this last year too, but, you know, this year more than ever, I think uh, the demand, the need is out there. And so that's why we're hitting the street today for Giving Tuesday. And if you are doing something for Giving Tuesday, maybe it's not uh, necessarily affiliated with what we're doing Please post a picture. Yeah. Give us a call. Let us know uh, what you're what you're doing to give back. I mean, Giving Tuesday is actually it's every day, right? But um, Amen. Yeah. Even on Wednesday and yeah. Monday sometimes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's six thirty one. The show is proudly brought to you by Pacific Points, Cabo Enterprises, IT and and Jack in the Box on this was it raining out there, Joe? Yeah, it's it's raining cats and galagos, right? It's a blessing though, exactly. you know. Exactly. Okay. Uh, 631. Let's go ahead and get into our first look at news now here with the very latest. Yes, the show goes on. Our first look at news brought to you by Pacific Points from the KUAM News team. Good morning, Sabrina Salas Mazzanani. Hi, everybody. We have a de- developing story in the CNMI. A 22 year old man who is a resident of Guam died in quarantine at the Marianas Resort on Saipan Monday, according to Department of Public Safety PIO Adrian Pangalinen. The case is still under investigation, but DPS says he arrived on island on November 23rd. The investigation is pending until they are able to notify next of kin. Now, once we have more information, we will, of course, pass it along. We'll be checking in with our Tomas Manglonia, who is on the ground in Saipan a little later in our show. The Joint Information Center reports 15 people now hospitalized with COVID, four receiving IC level of care, one on a ventilator, seven vaccinated, eight unvaccinated. Public Health reporting 16 more people tested positive for COVID. To date, there have been a total of 19,179 officially reported cases, 263 deaths, 1,651 people are in isolation, and 17,265 people have recovered. The CAR score is 0.8. As for vaccinations, as of November 28th, a total of 125,296 people have been vaccinated that are eligible. And with more news now, here is Hannah Devonzo. This news update is brought to you by Pacific Points. Do more, get more. Hafede and good morning, everyone. I'm Hannah Devonzo with your headlines here on The Link. The Guam Department of Education welcomed back all grade level students enrolled in the face-to-face module of learning to a full week of in-person instruction, which the agency says was smooth sailing. KUAM's Isaiah Uggen has this report. There were more than 26,000 Guam Department of Education students from pre-kindergarten through the 12th grade that walked back onto all 41 public school campuses for five days of in-person learning. Despite a shortage of 12 bus drivers and the wet weather, GDWE Interim Public Information Officer Michelle Franquez said in a Zoom interview with KUAM News that the first day of the resumption went well. Typically, according to Deputy Eric Cruz, we work with 100 buses, but we're instead now working with 88. But even if they had to double back, our students were able to be dropped off in time uh, before classes began. And so, uh, again, uh, some of our schools just said, other than the weather being really cold, uh, you know, they had a smooth uh early morning drop off for most part. GDOE's original plan was to have high school students return on Wednesday, December 1st for a full week of in-person instruction while elementary and middle schools by Monday, January 3rd. However, the Guam Education Board had a different plan. The GEB gave the green light last week Tuesday through resolution 2021-12, allowing all grade levels to return to classes full time today, November 29th, two days prior to the original plan. Franquez said the attendance rate for today was great. Well, overall, we had a well, with some of the reports coming in from uh, several of our schools, we had about a 75 to 85 percent attendance rate, which is pretty good uh, in, in, in general for our students who are attending school face to face. But according to KUAM News Archives, the attendance rate prior to the COVID-19 pandemic ranges from 90 to 92 percent. 
Meanwhile, JDOE is still expected to hold a community parent input session soon. I believe we're most likely going to schedule one as soon as we first get our input from all the schools and see what are some of the challenges that we are addressing. And of course, we want to make sure that when we have our parent input sessions, we're able to give, you know, uh, very important messages. GDOE noted students registered to the online model of learning will remain in the mode until the end of the school year. Reporting for Guam's News Network, Guahu Siazia Agan. There are some revealing findings in a just released report that examines the alarming number of COVID dead on arrival cases on Guam. We spoke with territorial epidemiologist Dr. Ann Pobetsky, who explains that the preliminary data shows clear trends and who were most susceptible to being a DOA case. It was all triggered by the deaths of a married couple in early July. They were pronounced dead on arrival at the hospital within a week of each other. And within a month, there were numerous other such DOA cases. It drew enough concern that even officials from the Centers for Disease Control have been brought in and continued to investigate. What's striking is that of the 119 COVID deaths from the four-month period from July 8th to November 19th, nearly 40%, 40% were dead on arrival cases. It's heavily skewing um, disproportionately with um, Pacific Islanders, uh, Micronesians, and especially Chukis. By sex, what we're seeing is it's heavily skewed towards males uh, for both dead on arrivals uh, and the non-dead on arrival cases, but even more so with the dead on arrivals. You know why men don't go to the hospital until it's too late or the doctor. By age, we're also seeing it's heavily skewing towards elderly people in both categories, the dead on arrival and non-dead on arrival cases. But there's more in the dead on arrival cases of middle-aged people, uh, 40 to 59. Most of the cases uh, in both instances are from the north our pop, most populated villages, but we see a slight difference with um, slightly more if coming from the south with the dead on arrivals. Not sure why. But the biggest takeaway for Dr. Pobutsky? 82% of the dead on arrival cases were unvaccinated compared to 58% of the non-DOA cases. So that's a, definitely a risk factor. The data is just a preliminary look as the CDC team continues to look into the DOA phenomenon. We should get a lot more detail on this as this investigation unfolds in the next uh, couple of months. In the meantime, they're planning more outreach to increase COVID literacy among those who should get treatment but aren't. We had uh, two press conferences, at one at the end of August and one in early uh, mid, I'm sorry, uh, September to kind of alert the community about this because at the time, um, monoclonal antibody treatments were available at all of the hospitals and there's no reason, uh, I mean, people could get tr the treatment right away. For Guam's News Network, I'm Nestor Lacanto. Guam Police Department Acting Spokesperson Officer Berlin Sevilla confirms that a criminal complaint has been filed against Guam Police Department's Acting Police Commander, Major Manny Chung. The complaint was filed by a fellow GPD officer. Sevilla adds that it has been referred to the Office of the Attorney General's Office for their investigation. GPD Chief Stephen Ignacio declined to comment and referred all inquiries to OAG. KUAM reached out to the OAG and has yet to receive a response. As you may recall, it was last week when GPD issued a release that a staff officer was under investigation. GPD's internal affair opened an administrative investigation for alleged misconduct that occurred during the late night hours of November 11 in the Sagan Ipau Pau neighborhood in Dededo. Ignacio has coordinated with the AG's office to conduct a criminal investigation into this matter as well. And a quick programming note on Friday, December 3 at 7 p.m. on NBC TV 8, the holiday production of Annie Live will help kickstart this festive season. Here's more. My name is Selena Smith and I play Annie on Annie Live. I'm excited to be a part of a huge production, letting the world know that we are back and we are here to lift your spirits up. It's gonna be so fun being transported to a place that is magical and that we have the opportunity to do this fantastic musical on live TV. Being able to do the flips and the kicks and the tab dancing, just so excited. <laughs> it's hard not life. Oh my gosh, I have the honor of playing the role of Grace Farrell. She is the chief of staff to Oliver Warbucks, and I can't wait for you all to see it. 
Annie, would you like to spend the next two weeks at Mr. Warbuck's house? I would love to. You can see from the sweat rehearsing real hard, playing rooster. Easy stream. To me, Miss Hannigan is a character to really have fun with. Hold it, sister. Get out. Annie, I think, is going to be redefined by Selena. We love her. <laughs> She's a light and cheery character. And I thought me being able to share the message to everybody and just put a smile on their faces, well, it just means the world. Tomorrow, tomorrow, I love you, tomorrow, you're always a day away. Daddy Warbucks has money and everything material, falls in love with her and wants to adopt her and take her away from the evil Miss Hannigan. You don't want Annie. She's a drunk and a liar. The best part is all of the departments putting our heads together to create the great Annie. The hardest part is going to be having to say goodbye. I am excited. <laughs> I can't wait for the world to see the great talent that you are. Thank you. Again, Annie Live airs Friday, December 3 at 7 p.m. only on NBC TV 8. That's it for now. We'll see you tonight for KUAM's Primetime. This news update is brought to you by Pacific Points. Do more, get more. Thanks, Hannah. With the discovery of the new Omicron variant, Daniel Perez takes a closer look on what this means for Guam. Okay. Well, world health officials say the Omicron coronavirus poses a very high global risk. President Biden is taking action to slow the spread of the new variant, including new travel restrictions, which kicked in today. Natalie Brand reports. President Biden spent the morning huddled with his COVID response team discussing the newly discovered Omicron variant. This variant is a cause for concern, not a cause for panic. We have the best vaccine in the world, <clears throat> the best medicines the best scientists, and we're learning more every single day. Today is the first day of travel restrictions in the United States, keeping non-U.S. citizens from entering the country from South Africa and seven other nations. But the variant has spread well beyond Southern Africa, reaching at least 14 countries, including our neighbor to the north, Canada. We needed time to give people an opportunity to say, get that vaccination now before it heads. It's going to move around the world. I think it's almost inevitable there will be at some point that uh, that strain here in the United States. The administration's top health officials spent Thanksgiving weekend coordinating with South African scientists to learn just how dangerous this new variant may be. The things that we don't know right now is whether the people who do get infected have a severe form of disease or whether it's a light disease or somewhat the same as Delta. Omicron contains more than 30 mutations to its spike protein, prompting concerns from some it could be vaccine resistant. My team is already working with officials at Pfizer and Moderna and Johnson and Johnson to develop contingency plans for vaccines or boosters if needed. Vaccine manufacturers say it will take about two weeks to learn whether or not their drugs work against Omicron. Despite that, health officials say now is the time to get vaccinated or boosted. Natalie Brandt, CBS News, the White House. Two weeks after her return, Governor Lulian Grote is back in the mainland U.S. She'll be attending a three-day summit of the new $1.2 trillion infrastructure bill, <coughs> excuse me, hosted by the National Governors Association. In a recent news conference, the governor explained that there will be daily cabinet-level presentations designed to help state and territorial leaders decide how to spend the money. Earlier this month, the governor was in New York City to meet with bond rating agencies, and then she went to the White House to attend the signing ceremony for the historic infrastructure bill. While she's gone, Lieutenant Governor Josh Chinorio will be the acting governor, and Speaker Therese Chilahi will be the acting lieutenant governor. Senator Joanne Brown is responding to the Port Authority of Guam's resolution seeking to take action against her for what Port GM Rory Respicio says are illegal retroactive raises received by her when she was the Port GM. Senator Brown saying the law specifically says, quote, any person who authorizes a pay raise that is retroactive in violation of the law shall be guilty of a misdemeanor. Brown's release saying current board uh, port chair Frank Santos and port board member Nate Timingloo were on the board when they 
alleged when the alleged illegal acts occurred and are members now. The senator said the port's resolution amounts to the port board tasking GM Respicio to go out and get a misdemeanor prosecution against two of his bosses. Respicio in a release countered by saying Brown continues to muddy the water. The release stating timing lo- didn't sign off on any of Brown's raises, but didn't mention if current board chair Santos did. It added that the port will take any and all administrative administrative action to recover the illegal money she received. Now, Port Board Authority Chair Francisco Santos also issued a response late yesterday. He says after reviewing past board meeting minutes, he calls the board approving Brown's performance evaluation and never approving any retroactive salary pay raises. He adds the only remedy is for Brown to pay it back. Their chairman added, quote, I expected that the former general manager would have followed all the laws and rules and regulations. As her former boss, I am deeply disappointed in her response. The Department of Agriculture is calling for the community's assistance in identifying the person or persons responsible for the recent rash of vandalism, burglary, and theft of property at their compound in Mingilao. According to a release, items taken include eight 4x4 tires with 17-inch rims, three Nissan Frontiers 2005 King Cab, an all-man brand generator light tower and solar exterior light panels. There is a $2,000 reward for anyone who provides information that leads to the arrest and conviction of the individuals. If you have any questions or information, please contact conservation officers at 671-864-TOCA. That's 8652. So that's 671-864-8652. And finally, as we mentioned, it is Giving Tuesday, and as a longtime participant in the event, we're proud to not only say Guam is where America's Day begins, but where the world's Giving Tuesday begins. Today, the KUAM Care Force, along with the organizations, schools, businesses, and agencies from both private and public sector, will be participating in this global day of generosity, along with more than 75 countries and millions of participants around the world. The spirit of giving that we share here on Guam is so impactful and infectious and resonates not only in our community, but also inspires those around the world. This year, Giving Tuesday is themed around the concept of unleashing radical generosity, and we know so many will embrace this concept as they always do. Giving Tuesday demonstrates how every act of generosity counts and that they mean even more when we give together. We hope you'll join in our movement by dropping off a donation of canned goods or toys here at our Harmon Studios today between 8 a.m. to 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And with more news now, here is Ken Bank. <laughs> Ito si Mana Dispesa ni Matutati, imagahanga Lulion Guerrero sa Parodin o Talo Isla para Estados Unidos. Pero sa una wihigi tres dias na meeting summit, gazin may buna 1.2 street zone pesos na infrastructure na bill ni Parominento ni National Governors Association. Di konferensya ni News sa explica gobedno na paraugwahan na di cabinet level na presentasyon siya kada dia. Nung madisig na parang inadzuday man magasi teritoryo ng Estados Unidos, tama nung madisidi para magasta islapi. Kitafta pagu na meso mana gobedno para New York City para ali zani ahenchan bond rating siya. Gidispuesa manao katigyo White House para tende zi ceremonio para finin man infrastructure bill. Mentras gaigi guihi isigundo gobedno Justin Orio si guiza sempre acting governor. Zai speaker pa yung laislatura Teresa Lahi sa isigundo gobedno. Mas asunto, a spokesperson para Departamento ng Polisya, si Berlin Savilla, sa konfirma na guha kumplain kriminal, mafayo kontra Guam Police Department Acting Commander, Manny Chong. A kumplain sa mafayo ni Otron Oficial di GPD. Ilingin mas si Savilla na esta mariferi at sana kausa guwati ki ofisina ni Erirat Abogadong Guahan, pero may mistika. Timalagwa sangan mas si Efe ni GPD, Stephen Ignacio, sa referi to di kwestiyon na siya, pero guwati ki ofisina ni Erirat Abogadong Guahan. Na mamay sa ni KUAM News much information para estilo taza tabi ang manoopi gin na sa ofisina. Nuri ni por KUAM gimapos na simana manahusang release ni GPD na unun official staff guihi sa membisitika. Mababa administrative na investigasyon ni internal affairs si GPD para na chakin misconduct ni masasari gipangin 11 Novembri gisakan ni Papa gizadetitu. Duman niya signal siya sa ni ofisina ni Herodot Bagao para maimbestigan kriminat esti na kausa lukwi. Yutu mo na asunto para pagod na matters kini ni KOM News kifinot sa moro. I Departamento ng Agricultura sa man mamamasa na zulo gi community lot para ma-identifika azi sesyo man makedistroso masaki zan mahatbi ilugad niya gi sa mangilaw. Sigon na release masaki otso na redan 4x4 no 17 portgadas rim niya dress na 2005 Nissan Frontier King Cap on outman na klasin generator light tower sa panels niya para solar na kandisan hizong. 
managuhad dos mil pesos na reward para masaya hazi como mama na informasyon ni ni na ma arresta sa ma convicta esti siya na persona como guha sa kustonya para informasyon por favor organ conservation officers kisay sa ti uno o tu sa iskuatro o tu sa is cinco dos patoka para iguam news network guha si kin conception yasuto yu finu tamoru sa presenta sa ni na foto ni familia mizu di first Hawaiian bank Say hello to the First Hawaiian Bank mobile app. Want a better look at your spending? With Money Map, you can automatically create budgets and manage where your money is going. Know when you have a green light or when it's time to slow down. Maybe cook more meals at home this week. Set your goals, track your progress, and find your way to exactly where you want to be with Money Map from the First Hawaiian Bank mobile app. It all starts with yes. It's time to save on shipping. Support our local entrepreneurs. Find the best steals, deals, and unique products for your holiday shopping needs. The Christmas Pops Virtual Holiday Marketplace is your hub for the best local gifts. Watch the Christmas Pops special airing through December 11th and streaming now across the stations and platforms of KUAM Communications. Visit KUAMChristmasPops.com and be on the lookout for local business profiles on our social media pages. Shop small and support local this holiday season. Presented by UOG School of Business and Public Administration, JA Guam, inspiring youth, and the Guam Visitors Bureau, making Guam a better place to live, work, and visit. Half a day. This is Governor Lou Leon Guerrero. If you're struggling to pay rent and utilities because of the pandemic, your government can help. Our Emergency Rental Assistance Program provides direct relief to you. To date, over $6.9 million has helped over 1,500 households. Apply online at doa.guam.gov or call the Department of Administration's Emergency Rental Assistance Program at 671-638-4518 or 19. Get the job done the right way by getting the right stuff at East West Rental Center. With years of experience helping builders, we definitely got what you need. Call 646-1463 or visit us in Upper Tumon. Open Monday to Saturday from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. and on Sundays from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. The relationship between Guam and Manila, Philippines is undeniable as we share similar cultural traditions, history, and heritage. With generations of Filipinos calling Guam home, KUAM presents a monthly look at the capital city, featuring in-depth and engaging interviews on everything from medical tourism to new business and government leaders. Veteran newscaster Nestor Lecanto delivers Beyond Our Borders. This special program is brought to you by KFC. GU Self Storage, conveniently located near the Harmon McDonald's. We offer affordable rates, online payments, and auto bill pay for your convenience. Plus, gate access daily from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. Call us today at 648-7867 for more information. Do you feel like you're missing out on something? Make life more rewarding with Pacific Points. Earn and redeem points for bill rebates and free load at ITE, discounts on fuel at Shell, vouchers at Foodies, and United Mileage Plus Miles. You can even pay with Pacific Points at ITE, Shell, and Foodies. Pacific Points. Do more, get more. KUAM's multi-platform morning show, The Link, just got a little more delicious with Feed Me Fridays. Chris, Sabrina, Jason, and the rest of the morning crew will take some time off each Friday to talk, taste, and tempt you with all the latest and greatest food and drinks on Guam. Old faves, new hits, and everything else we can put in our bellies. It's Feed Me Fridays on The Link, brought to you by King's Restaurants, Ruby Tuesday Guam, and Bevendale. Real milk from free grazing cows. Catch Sports Link on the KUAM News Morning Show, The Link, every Friday for the latest sports news, game schedules, athlete profiles, and more. Sports Link airs every Friday across the multi platforms of KUAM. Tune in to the broadcast on Breeze 93.9 FM on KUAM TV 11, live stream through the KUAM News Facebook page, or view highlights on YouTube, KUAM News Facebook, and Instagram page. Sports Link is brought to you by Marianas Irrigation and Landscape. 
year. Giving Tuesday falls on November 30th. And though our community is still facing some of the most challenging of times, there's no better time. To volunteer, donate, spread awareness, and do whatever you can to help those in need. Let's continue to build a wave of generosity that creates a ripple effect for all in our community. Throughout the month of November, Team KUAM Care Force will be showcasing some of our favorite charities. To inform, inspire, and introduce you to the wonderful things these groups are doing for our community. We're also calling on you to donate to our food pantry and toy drive to benefit the Salvation Army at our KUAM studios. Any weekday between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. starting on November 1st. Or stop by our second annual donation drive through event on November 30th. You can also visit our studios to sign our kindness for caregivers wall to show our healthcare workers our appreciation. So be a giver and join the KUAM Care Force this year in making a difference this Giving Tuesday. Giving Tuesday 2021 is presented in partnership with our community partner, APL. Better ways. See what's on TV tonight with schedules, network news and notes, local promotions and giveaways on KYM Communications social media pages. Like and follow us on Facebook or Instagram now for all the latest and never miss out. Culture Club returns to KUM Digital and KUM News Weekend Edition, highlighting Guam's young artists, activists, and crafters as they work to protect, preserve, and promote our Tomoto culture. Watch this weekly feature on the digital platforms of KUM News Weekend Edition, brought to you by Hanum, the freshest bottled water made in Guam. The KUAM Podcast Network is back and on demand. Featuring a great variety of podcasts from our island and region, including culture, lifestyle, awareness, crime, politics, commentary, comedy, and entertainment. Available on most streaming platforms. The KUAM Podcast Network. Subscribe and listen now. This season, KUAM Communications is ready to go with more games, more championships, and more sports specials guaranteed to bring out the fan in you. Don't miss a minute of gameplay from NBC on KUAM TV 8 or from CBS on KUAM TV 11. We're bringing you all the action and excitement brought to you locally by Mariana's Irrigation and Landscape and Docomo Pacific. classic stuff say about the maybe the christmas before the pandemic wow you got me you got me jay we used to go to midnight mass all again, the time of course in again it heights but from jigo and yeah. that, that's that's a long wow. night when you're an 11 year old kid i was just trying to google this um saint francis 
children's choir okay album. chris is on amazon.com right now yeah because i wanted to see when did this i can't find the christmas that was around 90, 96 97 because right. i remember when my first job out of college and everything that cd just came out and when i was i was at computer land we actually played that nice. the saint francis from begin and beginning to end and then we looped it and we had this playing in all of our okay it was remember when macintosh everybody this huh. this is an old school thing macintosh at one point had clones they were called power computing machines. Oh, yeah, power computing machines. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. And so we, we would play the San Fran St. Francis Choir. People would come in and hang out in a computer store showroom. That's how geeky like it was because it was wonderful Christmas music. And it was, you know, like July at that point. So and we were still playing and it was like, wow. hey, these are local kids and they're really, really good. Yeah, and they're all grown up now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one of them one right? of them's on tour with, you know, like Beyonce. There's probably the somebody one. on the way to school is where they like, oh, that's your dad. That's your dad when he's to school. Now, what I want to know is, do they still get residuals? I wonder. And this album is uh, so classic because this is the one that has the uh, Johnny Sablon uh, performing with the St. Francis Children's Choir. That ching a ling a ling, ching ching, ching a ling a ling, ching ching. So that's a pretty classic uh, album right there. The St. Francis how old you, Children's how old you Choir. Think they were if they were at St. Francis, they would have been around like what fifth, sixth grade, maybe? yeah, no, maybe fourth, fifth grade, yeah, yeah. So, and that was in 90, let's just call it 96. So 20 plus five. Yeah. So 25 years ago. So they would be around, they would be in their late thirties now. Yeah. Uh, we got some comments here in our no, Facebook live. Late 30s. Uh, would they? I don't know. 25. Yeah. They're probably in their thirties. Early thirties. Yeah. They're definitely older than they were. That's for sure. Hey, but you, I would you, bet guys, on that. you guys capture you guys are part of Guam history, the totally. entire choir, and you guys captured a moment that to this day persists. So and that's why you. I love the holidays, uh, because we get to bust out all of our I mean, we have an extensive, the most extensive local uh Christmas music library ever, uh here at the stations of KUAM. I and mean, we get to flex it a little bit, uh, right? And we're flexing our huh? How's that? Our little KUAM care force dry fits right just in case we get a little because i get emotional on giving tuesday i've been known to shed a tear or two and if i do shed any tears today i want to make sure that they're shed onto my dry fit uh giving tuesday shirt so they could dry quickly right and plus it's raining out there so uh we're ready to roll man okay you have care for us we're doing your donations accepting them it's a drive-through thing here guys so just drive on through the stations at kuam Stop by the store this morning. Grab you some canned goods or whatever. You know what I mean? Maybe you got unwrapped toys for the kids. Swing by. Drop your donation. You're going to feel good. And remember, we, we talked to the Marines yesterday. We had our friend uh, Phil Santos from the Guam Chamber of Commerce and then Gunnery Sergeant uh, Ruben Tan. Gunny is coming by. Right. You know the Marines, if they say they're going to do something... They're Probably get, they're going to do it. I they're they're going to do it. They're going to do it on time, and they're going to do it to completion, and they will snap, too. And we've got a couple resolutions, too. You say you want a resolution. <laughs> well, we got two. We got one from uh, Acting Governor Speaking Josh. Speaking of Tenorio. residuals. Right. You uh, just made Yoko Ono like two, <laughs> two cents. Uh, so, yeah, we're getting Lieutenant Governor, or Acting Governor Josh Tenorio is doing a resolution, and then uh, we've got a bunch of the senators uh, led by uh, Senator Talina Nelson. She's up first. She's at 830. Swinging by uh, the station this morning. So, guys, if you have a donation, it runs all day from 8 to 2. KUAM Care Force is going to be out there. You don't even have to get out of your vehicle. Okay, just pull up, stick the bag out. We'll take it from you. We'll squirt a little sanitizer on you if you want. You know what I mean? Just swing by. Uh, make this Giving Tuesday count. It's 7.03. You know what's one thing I yeah. really have learned about the pandemic? And I guess th this is one of the, uh, the few positives about it. I've actually become really, really good at being able to tell when people smile, even when they're wearing a mask. Right. There's so much you can get, like, from the eyes. I mean, you don't have I to go, see teeth. And... I go mega bats ago and I smile. You can't even see my eyes. There you go. <laughs> so it's easy. Uh, so 703, uh, good morning. Facebook Live again. Uh, we are getting talk about the booster. Jay, do you have that info on uh, where to get the vax, where to get the booster for today? Yeah, yeah. so uh, here, right booster, yeah, booster, of course, uh, is available every day except Sundays. And Thursdays at the UOG Cavill Fieldhouse in Minila. Go to tinyurl.com slash VAXGuam. And also Mondays, Thursdays, and Fridays and Saturdays up at the Dededo Public Health Center. And then Tuesdays and Wednesdays over in Inalahan at the Public Health Center there. And to make an appointment there, you can go to tinyurl.com slash COVID stops with me. Again, uh, boosters available 
all the way until like little kids. And we, we hope you do. And uh, of course, uh, Chris was mentioning yesterday, right? You said uh, Dr. Wynn from American Medical Center said there's another uh, FD youth yeah. um, on vaccination plan coming on, on the 11th. On the 11th, right. And so uh, we did get a lot of comments in here. Uh, Chris Cave comments in, I heard there's a new variant praying that it doesn't enter our island. Is it? Is it? It's not Omicron. Omicron. It's Omicron. Yeah. Okay, and this is the new variant. And if you're following the national news, they're saying that they don't know yet if it's going to be resistant to the vaccine, which is interesting because locally I did see it reported that the physician advisor group chair, Dr. Nathaniel Berg, um, said that the vaccine would protect against the um, uh, variant. But I think at this point they'll just say anything. Uh, but so I would just be patient, wait it out. I mean, everybody's talking about this. My daughter's supposed to come back in January. We're supposed to do a belated Christmas 2.0 when she comes back. Uh, but now she was texting me, Hey dad, do you know if they're going to reinstitute the quarantine? Are we? I don't know. Because again, it's one of these situations where we flip the switch open I mean, we're wide open pretty much. And here comes the variant Om- Omicron. Um, which the Greek, uh, J- the Greek letter O. Yeah, so there was actually uh, news out of Japan, guys. Japan is, let me get this up here. Uh, according to the New York Times, Japan has yeah. banned all foreign travelers. As well as, wow, this is pretty crazy, guys. So Japan has banned all foreign uh, travelers. Australia is delaying its reopening. And Morocco. If you guys are going to Morocco, I think they're also banning all travelers. So ah, there goes those Morocco plans. Uh, so yeah, this is something that we've got to watch. Uh, you know, honestly, sweetheart. <laughs> that's, the, that's the only reference I can make to Morocco. <laughs> uh, I just think of cumin. There you go. Right. Yeah. Uh, Seven oh seven is Tuesday, November thirtieth, ladies and gentlemen. With you our next must interview. Remember this. <laughs> a kiss is but a kiss. The one and only. Jason Solis. Good morning, Jason. And good morning, Chris. And good morning, uh, Guam. We are pleased to be joined in the KUM News Zoom Room uh, this morning by Her Honor herself, the Chief Chief Judge of the U.S. District Court of Guam, uh, the very Honorable Francis Tadinko Gatewood, because there is a family violence throughout Micronesia um, effort to decrease family violence throughout the region. So, uh, Your Honor, good morning. Always good to see you. And happy holidays to you and your family. Okay, hold on one second. I'm sorry. Hold on. Oh, no problem at all. Landline. Oh, okay. So, of course, uh, this is the Pacific Judicial Council, um, and they've partnered with uh, executive and legislative branches of government throughout the region because this is a known problem. Uh, good morning, Your Honor, once again, and Merry Christmas. Oh, Merry, well, Happy Thanksgiving, belated, and Merry Christmas, yeah. future. How was your Thanksgiving? Because because I know you are, you are somewhat, I mean, you're a woman of obviously many, many talents, but uh, you can really, really cook, too. So how was your Thanksgiving? Good. I, I usually don't eat red meat or anything like that, but I make all the red meat stuff for my cho- my husband and my kids. So I made a ham, like a ham. Oh, very nice. That's good. Okay, where do you stand with ham, like with, with the uh, with the cherry and the pineapple on top? Do you go traditional that way? or? Uh, I do pineapple, but I don't put it on top. I just use crushed pineapple in the marinade. Very, it tastes better that way. Very nice. Okay, well, we're... Now, I'll we're give you- I'll, I'll give you my uh, I'll give you my recipe. I think you'll love it. Oh yes, please. I, I, w- I would absolutely love that. Um, but one one thing that's equally uh, as important, and one thing that certainly a lot of people are going to get behind, is this um, initiative by the Pacific Judicial Council, where you've got uh, chief judges, not unlike yourself, as well as justices from the various Supreme uh, Courts, and they're coming together to is it to address um, the the current state of family violence throughout the region? Because that, that's a known problem. But you're you're coming up with solutions to try and really curtail. Uh, this very disturbing problem. Right. So what it is is the Pacific Judicial Council, um, and, and through myself and um, my, my co-chair, uh, Chief Justice Cyprian Manwa, from yeah, we are co-chairing this uh, community outreach. Uh, this is very ambitious. It's a, it's a very ambitious program, and we are excited because it, we're not just addressing it. We're actually uh, trying to um, uh, minimize family violence. And so what we're doing is. Uh, for the first time in the history of uh, the Pacific Judicial Council, as far as I know, in all the years I've been a member, um, the well, first of all, the council consists of the the, the ju- judicial officers from Chu, Kosrai, Pompei, Gap, Guam, the CNMI, American Samoa, Palau, Republic of Palau, mm. and so we've asked all the chief judges or the 
the chief uh, uh, officers, judicial officers, to take the lead and partner with the governor and the speaker of each of their congressional branches. Uh, so, so it's a tri, um, uh, tri branch approach. But like, so, so for example, Chief Justice Carmelito, and I hope you interview him. He can tell you how they formed the Guam team, Team Guam. So every every island has a team. So it, it may be comprised of somebody from for sure somebody from Department of Education, because what we're doing, uh, Jason, is every island will have one elementary school, one middle school, and one high school. This is our pilot program. And what we've done is we've developed a curriculum with our international speaker, and we have the information about him, Dr. Nedley, who's flying in today. And um, he has developed a curriculum with, um, with our council, with our planning committee, and, with, and he's also been in Micronesia. So our, the curriculum is going to be taught in the schools. But those are three three different levels of school on each island. Just one one you know one elementary, one middle, one high school, mm -hmm. and so um, so the the team will consist of some you know a teacher or some you know some teachers, somebody from mental health because family bonds. Th this whole um, this whole conference and, and you saw the um, press release. It's family violence. Um, the family fa uh, I'm sorry emotional qu quotient education program aiming to decrease family violence in Micronesia. Mm -hmm. So so Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, there's gonna be a train the trainer program. And because of the, you know, because of the, co the pandemic crisis, only some of the islands can actually be on Guam in person with Dr. Nedley. The other islands where, you know, where it's closed, the borders are closed, such as Chu, Klaus, Rai, Ponte, and Yap, and um, what, what they're going to do is they're going to they're going to zoom in virtually into my courtroom. So my courtroom will be the, the hub, and um, on the fourth floor of the district court. And so Dr. Nedley will be presenting there and his team. And so he, each island has their team led by the the, the chief uh, officer, judicial officer. So so um, let me keep going on. You want to? No, absolutely. Yeah. Going? Oh, okay. So so just as an FYI. This week is phase one, December 1 through December 2nd, December 3rd, where it's going to be like from 8 to eight to 4 o'clock, 8 to 5 each day. And um, and they're going to have like a lunch break and so forth. So we're actually kind of emulating it, even though like if you're, a, if you're the chief justice of CHU and you have your five, six member team for the schooling, um, you're going to take the same breaks that we take here on Guam when we're doing it in person. And then the Pacific Judicial Council is going to provide snacks for those persons when we take a lunch break here on Guam in person, they'll take a lunch break virtually. I mean, you know, over there, wherever they are. We all and break so bread together, all as one family. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, they, they don't just get their, their lunches. We've already arranged all that. We work closely with the chief justices and, of each island. Oh, very so nice. This is, yeah, so this is phase one. Uh, phase two will be, so between phase one, December one through three, up till January, uh, when they begin the, the actual teaching, the third quarter, that's when the, the teachers will go into the courtroom and teach the curriculum. And so they'll be teaching for the third quarter. And then when, that'll be done in like May. And then July will be phase three. And that'll be in person. So all the islands will hopefully come back to Guam or come to Guam, assuming COVID crisis is abated. <laughs> and we will have a report. Yeah, I know. We're, we're hoping that. But yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, so yeah, so it's really, it's really exciting. Um, we are, um, and it's not just, uh, Jason, it's not just the school. I mean, we also are going to have a component for community um, uh, not-for-profit organizations that support uh, family violence uh, issues, like for victims and survivors, and even for, even for defendants. I mean, because family violence, you know, just is not, it's just not, the, the focus for this is not just for the victim, it's also for for the children, sure. I'm, I'm sorry, not for just the victims, of, uh, but it's also for the defendants, the perpetrators. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're, we're focusing on—a whole approach that, if you get it into the school system, and you and you you teach the children about this with this curriculum, it's it's it should really stem the tide of of any increase in family violence. Yeah, Your Honor, how um I I appreciate that you brought up the fact that you know it's not just for the victims but also for the for the perpetrators for the defendants and everything. Um exactly in what scope and what in what context would this uh what what resources would be provided for 
the defendants? Is this, you know, like, a, like uh, well, if they have anger management issues, would it be counseling? And Yeah, yeah. So, so one of the things that I think that inspired us is, I mean, l- let me just back up. Mm-hmm. Because a, a child, a six-year-old child, an elementary student, a middle, school, a, a middle school student, high school student who emulate their father or their grandfather right. or their mom boyfriend, and so that's what we're talking about. We're talking about deep into that level, you know, starting at that level. If you could stop family violence at that level, then hopefully those people will not become defendants, will not become perpetrators. They won't be in the criminal justice system. So what we're trying to do is, you know, teach responsibility, teach respectability, teach civility, talk, to teach managing your emotions, managing your anger management. That's what we're talking about mm-hmm. uh, at that level. And it's just, like I said, it's a pilot program. And I think um, what's critical for us, for myself and Chief Justice Manoir and all the Chief Justices of the of the um, Pacific Judicial Council, of course, including Chief Justice Carbolito, and I, I, I point him out in particular because he's our team Guam uh, leader. Um, we, are, we have been inspired by the um, uh, Secretary of Education, the current Secretary of Education, and his, his name is Dr. Miguel Cardona and the United States Surgeon General, the current one, uh, uh, Dr. Vivek Murthy. And one of the things that, you know, if you listen to some of their interviews, they talk about, you know, they're leaders in government and they, they want to respond to the challenges that are facing our children and youth, the mental health challenges that are facing our children and youth when it comes to, you know, whether it's the COVID crisis, whether it's the uh, family violence issues. I mean, that there is a crisis going on in our school system, and the school system, and I we agree with them, is a very uh, uh, powerful place to to um, to try to uh, instill some type of healing process for our children who are in need, and um, and so they recognize that there's a huge strain on the emotional and physical and uh, mental health well-being of these children. Absolutely. So I think. Right. So one of the things that we we, we are, I, and I think you know, just just as probably, you know, I I haven't had a chance to speak to him this week because he's in a appellate session. But when, I, I hope you speak to him soon. Um, he did tell me that he's you know obviously working closely with the governor, lieutenant governor. I think mental health, and he'll 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 get into all that, and uh, with the speaker, I think as well for a good team because what what's a, what I think is important for us at the Pacific Judicial Council. Uh, for myself as a uh, as a board member, and uh, Chief Justice Cyprian as also we're both co-board members and co-chairs of this uh, ambitious program is we feel it's our responsibility to 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 be visionary leaders in this uh, in 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 in, in this uh, situation that faces our Micronesian islands, mm. and I think what's going to be very um, critical. Uh, is that the curriculum, Jason, is very relatable to uh, the Micronesian Islanders. Uh, it's not like something that you're going to get from the East Coast of the United States of America. It's going to be... And they try and force fit it in, into our culture and the particularities of, you know, like the way, you know, our island way of life. And this this is something kind of custom designed for who we are as a people and, and our, our idiosyncrasies. Exactly, you're absolutely right, and, and you'll see like, um, and, and we'll show that to you at some point, uh, Jason. Is that the um, the, the curriculum has um, uh, sketches of, of you know children who are, who look Micronesian, who look like they're from Guam, mm-hmm. who look like they're from Chu, from Cross Rai, and Yap, and so forth. So there um, is that empathy like that, that really allows you know the, the the curriculum on paper to really make that emotional and academic connection, you know with you know with the families with the kids with the wives right. and with with the husbands for that matter exactly exactly so we, we're excited about this i mean it's it you know um we have the ninth circuit so our education specialist our ninth circuit education specialist russ russ matheson flew in yesterday so he's here on guam so he'll be he's helping coordinate this a uh, big um program he has a platform he's focusing on we have a website i'll, I'll make sure we get that to you uh for the pacific judicial council um website as it as it relates to this program oh, yes, and please. he has his team here to make sure that the virtual platform hopefully that it, it is successful in all the islands because 
we, we wish that they could all be here in person, but that's just not going to happen. And I, I just thought today. about something. Uh, a, a thought just occurred to me, Your Honor, because if you look at the chronology of what we've all been through as, as a community during the pandemic is I know that when when the word quarantine and, you know, lockdown really started hitting around maybe like uh, last May or so, uh, the number one concern, at least or one of them from uh, people in your line of work and from law enforcers were saying, you know, from the police department were saying, um, you know, uh, we're really concerned about family violence taking an uptick because now you've got, you know, people who may have, you know, tension in the family or anger management issues. And now they're all locked up together. And the only outlet is going to be, you know, these unspeakable acts. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, yes, I, I saw the coverage on that, the media coverage and, and, and so forth. Um, in terms of uh, statistics or numbers, I think that's something that you, you have to get through uh, Chief Justice Carbolito or mm -hmm. or the police department. Uh, uh, the, the family violence cases are are predominantly, or are, are actually all of them are, are uh, actually prosecuted in the local courts. Uh, and so that's why this, this particular um, program this EQ, this emotional quotient, you know, you don't really hear that very much, but you'll hear Dr. Nedley talk about that, uh, you know, how to manage your emotions, how to manage your anger. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and we want, and the goal is to try to teach that early on to our children in the curriculum uh, that's been developed. And it's, it's a, it's a custom made curriculum, uh, Jason, and uh, we're, we're pretty, pretty excited about the launch of this program and, uh, tomorrow. It starts what? tomorrow morning. Your Honor, in, in all the years that you've been practicing law and you know up to the current moment and everything, has the scope of what is legally defined as family violence has uh, how has that broadened? And you know, uh, because you know, I, and I think what you're saying is one of the, I would say one of the foundations of your leadership is you've always said you know being self-aware is very very good. The world is constantly changing. We have to constantly keep ourselves abreast uh, as practitioners of justice to make sure that we understand how people behave. So. Um, and with mental health being, you know, such a wide spectrum right now, has that had an effect on on how we see family violence and, you know, like and how certain cases can now be considered, you know, um, against the law? Well, I mean, you know, um, you know, we've been taught as judges, as, as for myself, as former prosecutor, that um, family violence is a control issue, really, somebody who, who, who wants to control another person. So he or she will will fight somebody, they'll beat them up, they'll stab them, they'll kill them, uh, whatever whatever the situation may be. And uh, when you when you um, add the component of a mental illness uh, to an anger issue, another illness it could be you know the person's narcissistic, sociopathic, and so forth. When you add all of those to uh, a person's um, being and and who they are their character and everything uh it, it just exacerbates a, a family violence situation you know we, we've seen um at least i've seen it through my years i mean i've been a judge 27 years a long time and i and I, I was a prosecutor for 10 years and before that and so i've seen a lot of family violence cases and more often than not uh jason um the the, the perpetrators emulate what they have experienced in their own lives mm -hmm. when they were children what they saw their mother do or not do when their father beat the hell out of her or um and, and so, so that is that is their only frame of reference because that's their world you know in in, in many cases would, would you agree that like uh especially when that impact is made on young children you know they don't know it's wrong necessarily they're just like okay well mom and dad are fighting but the degree to which they're fighting actually is against the law because they're taking it way too far yeah, I mean, it's sort of like, I remember, you know, this is kind of shocking maybe for some people, but I remember uh, when I was a, a prosecutor years ago, and I asked a young girl, the young victim, I said, so, you know, you were you were being sexually abused for two years. Um, why, why didn't you tell anybody? Why didn't you tell the nurse? I mean, part of the thing is, you know, part of the curriculum, I'm certain with this uh, uh, um, EQ uh, approach that we're going to take uh, starting tomorrow, is to, to know what, what's accessible to the children. Like, can you tell your counselor? Can you tell your nurse at the school? Can you tell your teacher? Or how do you do it, you know? And, and this little girl said to me, um, yeah, I, I, didn't, I didn't tell anybody that my mom's boyfriend was sexually abusing me because I thought it was normal. You know, she really did. Yeah. And I go, oh, she, you know, and I just, you know, I look back and I said, well, why did you think she was, 
Um, because my mother didn't say anything. She wasn't like nobody said, nobody ever told me that it was wrong. Mm -hmm. um, it was something pleasurable that she thought, oh, this is, feels good and must be okay. And nobody, my mom's not getting mad and her boyfriend's coming into my room. And you know, you know what I'm saying? So to me, that's just so unbelievable. But it, but it happens, you know? So I think when you're a child, you're so vulnerable, you're so susceptible to 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 believing uh, whatever you whatever your environment is. Mm -hmm. you know? And your and, your um, parents are, are everything to you, and the way they be. I mean, there's basically like you know, there's there's God, and then there's you know your parents as far as you know what you know, and you know who's authoritative in your life. Yeah, and, I mean, and, and I guess that speak, that that speaks to the value of this that. of this curriculum being you know localized and and you know kids can relate to that as they said you know i know in in our culture you know i'm not supposed to speak out of turn i'm not supposed to you know um do anything that would you know uh disgrace my family or anything like that and those you know, it's a little bit more sensitive out here and like you said uh than it might be to our friends in the mainland yeah i mean i think i think it's it's it's, it's the same i mean i think it's the same everywhere nationally and internationally but i do think that um as i as i think about it i mean that's assuming that you have a normal like i should say normal family Assuming you have a family that has a relationship with God, assuming that you have a family that's stable, it's not a fractured family or a blended family. I mean, you know, the Guam that I grew up in is far different from the Guam today. Mm -hmm. Seriously, I mean, how many of my I don't remember for, for better or worse. Uh, well, it's it's broken, it's fractured. Mm -hmm. I mean, Jason, how many? When you think about it, I don't know if you can. I, I'm sure you can, but. When you were growing up, how many of your friends' parents were divorced or separated? Hardly any. I mean, there there, there were a few, but now, I mean, what what's the statistic they always throw around? Like one out of every two marriages end in divorce, which is astonishing. Astonishing, and so so that's what I mean. I mean, I think there's just a different, um, yeah, it's just, it's just a different way of life. I mean, it's just it's a different Guam. I mean, Guam, the thing about Guam that's so special is. We hold on to our culture. We hold on to our our love of family, our closeness. I mean, that is that is very critical. Um, and um, anyway, I'm I, and I, I know that uh, I'm, I'm pretty confident that Dr. Nedley and, and hopefully you'll we'll get a chance to interview him, Jason. Oh, we would uh, love he, to. He will bring in the faith component as well. I mean, I think I, I don't know. I don't know if you've seen that study. I read this that. They say that children who don't have a faith uh, generally are very more depressed than those that do in mm. their lifetime. Th there's there's uh, another I, way, um, Judge, that, that the world and particularly Guam has changed too. Is you know, I mean, when I was a kid, everybody I knew, you know, went went to some sort of church, and and I don't recall a time in in the 47 years that I've been alive now where there are more people and more families that you know like don't subscribe to a particular religion. I mean, it, you know, it, well, it, it was unheard of before. It's like everybody just went to some church. Right, and, and you don't, and the interesting thing is too, uh, Jason, is the number of churches have have escalated. There's just so many more now than there were when we were growing up. Like, all I knew was the Catholic Church, mm -hmm. or maybe some other church, one or two others, but that was it. That was my, that was the, 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 the sum of my world right there. Uh, now it's, it's different, and, and I'm not saying that's bad. I think uh, whatever your faith is, is, is fine. Uh, and, but and Guam has had a proliferation of, of different types of churches and types of faiths and so forth. And, and that, 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 that's a good thing for, for many, mm -hmm. many who don't believe in a certain faith, but believe in others. Absolutely. But anyway, yeah. So, but anyway, we're excited, Jason. Thank you for, for inviting us in. Um, Certainly. You, you know, know, you know you're always really welcome here, Your Honor. Well, thank you. And one of the, just wanted to do a um, acknowledgement as well, put out an acknowledgement is that uh, Churchill Edwards, the former director of education in Pontefe, and Carmen Ujoa Passover, a former uh, KUAM yep. reporter, uh, and now a teacher. She's been a teacher. She has her master's degree and so forth. Mm -hmm. she, um, she, She's uh, down at Guam Adventist Academy, Academy, right? Yeah, yeah, well, she was there. She was teaching there. Uh, but but she's very much involved in the Micronesian women's ministry, and mm. she's very much involved in a lot of the issues, including family violence issues. So the good thing about her um, is that she and Churchill Edwards in particular, those two have worked closely with uh, Chief Justice Cyprian Manoa from YAP and myself and the Nedley team. 
in developing this uh, customized curriculum. And um, so I just want to make sure I acknowledge them because they've done a lot of the hard work uh, that, that is uh, going to culminate in tomorrow's uh, um, presentation. Absolutely. And, and certainly, it, it, um, undeniably, it's taken a whole bunch of people and it's going to take a whole lot more to actually, um, you know, get this thing off the ground. But the dividends uh, that will be paid for this for our island community and throughout the region um, certainly are substantial. So, you know, um, thank you. Thank you. And for this, I'd love to catch up with you again and see, you know, how this things is, how this project's going through the various phases all the way to implementation. Yeah. Thank you, Jason. And just as, as a FYI, so if this is successful, which I'm pretty confident, we're in it to win it, believe me. And yeah. if, if this, uh, if when this conference is, uh, this phase one, two, and three, once that becomes successful, then our goal at the Pacific Judicial Council is to hand it off to the directors of education and mental health, to those professionals, let them take over. But we felt as leaders, judicial leaders with the Pacific Judicial Council, that we wanted to take the lead in, in, um, in starting the, the uh, program. So. Mm -hmm. Well, well, Lord knows GDOE and uh, the Guam Behavioral Health and Wellness Center. I know they've got a lot on their plate already, but uh, certainly this is something that they've even expressed to us. Like, in, you know, they'll make time for this because this this is very, very worthwhile and very necessary. So, Your Honor, thank you so much. Okay, take care, Jason. Thank our, you for the invitation. Our, and happy holidays to you and your family as well. Oh, thank you. Your, and your family, too. And I see Tomas Mangolian. Yeah, hey, hi, hi, Tomas. And Tomas hi, is good here. Good morning, Judge. <laughs> good morning. Nice to see you. Hi, Your Honor. Nice to see you. Good morning, Tomas. Keith. He's, he's, got that, he's got that wonderful... Speaking of regional, Your Honor, Tomas has that wonderful... Uh, that, Tomas, that's, uh, <laughs> that's from Capitol Hill? Uh, no, this is Rhoda, Jason. Oh, How that's Rhoda. You? Okay. <laughs> oh, I, I, need, I need to brush up on my regional sorry. geography. Sorry. Sorry, Tomas. Are you in Rhoda right now? No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Which is, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm on Saipan right now. <laughs> I, I, I thought you were. I saw that you were reporting from Saipan. All right. Yeah. Thank you very much. Take care. Take care, Jason. All right. Take Happy care. holidays. Good to Thank see you. Thank you, Your Honor. Bye-bye. Okay, bye. Yeah, call him our, our resident boy who jumped to Luta. <laughs> Tomas Maglotnia. Uh 731. Mont, we're going to take a quick break, and we're coming back with a regional update. There's a lot of stuff going on in the NMI, and we're going to tell you all about it next right here on the link. It's Giving Tuesday. Remember our uh, donation drive. It's a drive through deal. They're already setting up outside. It uh, goes 8 to 2. But if you're in the area and you have a donation now, we're not going to stop you. So come on uh, by, and we'll be doing our live show and have more details on all of that. They're coming up right here on the link at 731. Good morning. This year, Giving Tuesday falls on November 30th. And though our community is still facing some of the most challenging of times, there's no better time. To volunteer, donate, spread awareness, and do whatever you can to help those in need. Let's continue to build a wave of generosity that creates a ripple effect for all in our community. Throughout the month of November, Team KUAM Care Force will be showcasing some of our favorite charities. To inform, inspire, and introduce you to the wonderful things these groups are doing for our community. We're also calling on you to donate to our food pantry and toy drive to benefit the Salvation Army at our KUAM studios. Any weekday between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. starting on November 1st. Or stop by our second annual donation drive through event on November 30th. You can also visit our studios to sign our kindness for caregivers wall to show our healthcare workers our appreciation. So be a giver and join the KUAM Care Force this year in making a difference this Giving Tuesday. Giving Tuesday 2021 is presented in partnership with our community partner, APL. Better ways. It's time to save on shipping. Support our local entrepreneurs. Find the best steals, deals, and unique products for your holiday shopping needs. The Christmas Pops Virtual Holiday Marketplace is your hub for the best local gifts. Watch the Christmas Pops special airing through December 11th and streaming now across the stations and platforms of KUAM Communications. Visit KUAMChristmasPops.com and be on the lookout for local business profiles on our social media pages. Shop small and support local this holiday season. Presented by UOG School of Business and Public Administration, J.A. Guam, inspiring youth, and the Guam Visitors Bureau, making Guam a better place to live, work, and visit. The relationship between Guam and Manila, Philippines is undeniable as we share similar cultural traditions, history, and heritage. With generations of Filipinos calling Guam home, KUAM presents a monthly look at the capital city, featuring in-depth and engaging interviews on everything from medical tourism to new business and government leaders. Veteran newscaster Nestor Lecanto delivers Beyond Our Borders. This special program is brought to you by KFC. 
GU Self Storage, conveniently located near the Harmon McDonald's. We offer affordable rates, online payments, and auto bill pay for your convenience. Plus, gate access daily from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. Call us today at 648-7867 for more information. Do you feel like you're missing out on something? Make life more rewarding with Pacific Points. Earn and redeem points for bill rebates and free load at IT&E, discounts on fuel at Shell, vouchers at Foodies, and United Mileage Plus Miles. You can even pay with Pacific Points at IT&E, Shell, and Foodies. Pacific Points. Do more, get more. Mariana's Irrigation and Landscape Superstore. Stop on by and visit our showroom today. We offer everyday low prices on all major outdoor power equipment like bush cutter, chainsaw, power washer, generators, and more. Need service, repair, maintenance? Well, check out Guam's best superstore only at Mariana's Irrigation and Landscape, located in Barragata along Army Drive between Submarina and Best of Market. Call 735-7446 for more information. Now shipping to surrounding islands. Mariana's Irrigation and Landscape Superstore. Get the job done the right way by getting the right stuff at East West Rental Center. With years of experience helping builders, we definitely got what you need. Call 646-1463 or visit us in Upper Tumon. Open Monday to Saturday from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. and on Sundays from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Each morning on Breeze 93.9 FM. Mariana's Irrigation and Landscape Superstore. Stop on by and visit our showroom today. We offer everyday low prices on all major outdoor power equipment like bush cutter, chainsaw, power washer, generators, and more. Need service, repair, maintenance? Well, check out Guam's best superstore only at Mariana's Irrigation and Landscape, located in Barragata along Army Drive between Submarina and Best of Market. Call 735-7446 for more information. Now shipping to surrounding islands. Mariana's Irrigation and Landscape Superstore. Uno Mixed. We're mixing it up on the last Thursday.
hands on me. Please have snow and mistletoe. Have you guys ever tried mistletoe? What do you mean tried? What? Have you ever tried mistletoe? Have you ever? Have you ever? No, no. Have, yeah, please eat some mistletoe, Jake. Make a tea. Make no, a nice tea for yourself. Consume? Have you ever hung mistletoe in the please, hopes that gosh. you would have somebody kiss you for the holidays? On your belt buckle? Wow. No, I never have hung. No. It seems like a, a movie thing, though. You hang the mistletoe and like, hey, hey, hey. Oh, wow. Hey, whoa, how do we end up under this mistletoe? Is that how you imagine it playing out? I, I can't imagine Twitter would like allow mistletoe like these days and everything. Why? They probably cancel it. It's like, oh. Well, as long as you have consent to go in exactly. for a kiss, you're all good, Jay. 741. Good morning. Mistletoe, shoot your shot. That's it. Shoot that missile. <laughs> that mistletoe. That, that would not be a smart thing to say these days. Right on, yeah. Uh, with the tensions, right? Yeah. Uh, it's 741. Take it away, Bree. Yeah, uh, okay, guys. Brie, Brie or me. <laughs> yeah, so you know, um, the emergency emergency uh, rental assistance program is is underway with uh, the Department of Administration. <laughs> and there's, there's, somebody just gave you some nice messages. Yeah, I just want to ask, guys. So, like, let's say I had applied for this before, uh, but I was uh, deemed ineligible, and I've been feeling down about it, you know. And now I'm hearing on on. The breeze, the link that hey, there's these commercials playing. Like wow, they're doing another round of this ERA. But since I was rejected before, and they said I was ineligible, should I even bother? You should applying again. Thank you for that question, Shoot Chris. Your shot with the emergency you are encouraged to reapply, particularly if your financial status has changed or your housing becomes unstable. I and like I, I like how Jason put it. Shoot your shot when it comes to rental but when but it's not it's not just rental chris i mean the, the the spectrum of what you could qualify for is quite wide so this not only includes rent but rental arrears you know have you had problems making past due payments um utilities All about the arrears yeah not your rear end no your oh the arrears yeah. got it yeah um I'm sorry you threw me this off is with serious, the missile, guys. So, so your utilities so your water payments your home and and now yeah. also internet access so if you have tr- have had trouble getting online yeah. staying online <laughs> Uh, the emergency but what if my system? utilities got disconnected, though, Bree? How can they help me? You can apply. Yeah. And also <laughs> moving expenses. If, if you actually change residences, the ERA can help you in that regard. Are you regard serious? Too. Yeah. There's a, there's a lot that, that this thing covers, and that's why we really, really encourage people to check out the website right now. Their FAQ section is fantastic. They it are is. at yeah. uh, DOA dot guam dot gov the image is right on the top it says emergency rental assistance program they have everything under the sun you could possibly want to know about this but in the event you have some some weird little edge case or you have a situation that you're maybe you can't find or you're not you know completely comfortable talking to somebody about you can always um email era at doa.guam.gov or you can give them a call at 671-638- Four five one eight. I had to look at it. Six three eight. Yeah, I've never right. seen six three eight before. Well, what documents do I need to submit an application, though, Sabrina? Thank you for that question, Christopher. Upon pre-qualification eligibility, required documents to submit are your 2020 tax documents, employer furlough letter, employer segregation separation notice. Excuse me, <laughs> verification <laughs> of employment, photo identification, rental agreement. Copies of utility bill, if applicable, and various release forms. You're really Other good at this. Other documents may be requested as necessary. You know, yesterday, I already know yesterday, the ans- you know I already know the answers to the questions I'm asking, but I just want to hear Sabrina say yeah. it. Yesterday you sounded just like Siri. Today you actually sound more like Alexa. Thank you, Jason. Right on. <laughs> That's exactly how she sounds. Seven forty four. Siri, did the Warriors win today? Yes, they did, Jason. By the way. You are handsome. I, I actually hacked her to make her say that. Uh, Tomas Manglotnia. Like, Alexa, what, tell uh, me tell me, I'm good. Uh, hi, Tomas. Good morning. Good joining good us. Good morning, Wa. Thanks for the holiday skit, guys. That yeah. was pretty great. <laughs> Tomas, I'm, I'm going to build you an Alexa app. Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Thank you, Chase. It's Giving Tuesday. I, happy Giving Tuesday. I will take whatever you'd like to give. There, there you, you go. go. Uh, Tomas uh, giving us the latest update, though, uh, with regional uh, news live from the CNMI. Tomas, good morning. 
Good morning. Yes, uh, Chris, Bree, and, and Jace, uh, switching gears a little bit because uh, the, the uh, COVID-19 is uh, widespread in the CNMI, the chief hospital, uh, chief of the hospital, Esther Munya, uh, yesterday at a press briefing was telling us uh, the media that it's no longer about clusters. Uh, the spread is widespread and uh, encourages vaccinations. Of course, about 86% of the eligible population is vaccinated. Uh, schools reopen based on a testing and screening schedule. Um, and also just wanted to share some of the latest breakdowns given that this, of course, has happened, uh, I guess, now uh, officially a month since October 28, when uh, one of the first community cases was identified in over 200 days. So 496 cases have been identified since October 28. Of those, around 218 via contact tracing, 266 via community testing, and 12 through travel testing. And so uh, one thing that is noticeable when you look at the charts again, and the data they release is that community cases are at 520 now since March, and travel is since two, is 267 <clears throat> since March. So we're definitely seeing that spike. Um, and uh, yesterday, the Commonwealth Healthcare Corporation telling folks to practice the three W's, but also keep in mind that when you're interacting with people outside of your immediate, immediate bubble, to keep uh, wearing your mask. And uh, another thing uh, that we received an update on yesterday was that there are uh, of the four hospitalized that they reported are actually receiving uh, ICU level of care. They open, also happen to be uh, unvaccinated as well. And uh, we also learned about two cases that were brought to the alternate care site at Kanoa Resort to receive, uh, to, to be under observation. And uh, Chris and Bree, uh, yesterday we're also just uh, starting to learn. We have very few details about this case, but uh, what we do know is that uh, we're learning about a a death at one of the quarantine sites at the Marianas Resort. Uh, we were, we news came to us around late evening yesterday. And so far, the only thing that the Department of Public Safety here in the NMI is able to provide is that it was a 22 year old male, a resident of Guam who arrived on the 23rd. And this is from the Department of uh, Public Safety. The case is still under investigation pending notice of next of kin. I think it's uh, definitely something to mention that we do not know what the cause of death is. Uh, so uh, we're going to continue to uh, seek out more information on this. Obviously, the Department of Public Safety again saying that it's under investigation pending notice of of the next of kin. Tomas, I was there in the uh, press conference, of course, with you yesterday, and the one thing I found the most telling was, you know, um, CEO Esther Munya, right, of the Commonwealth Healthcare Corporation. We've had the pleasure of having her on this show at least twice, and, you know, through your reporting, we've actually, you know, uh, come to know her, you know, indirectly pretty well, but, but her body language, the tone of her voice, the timbre with which she spoke and everything like that, you could really see there's very, very strong uh, concern, and, you know, she was... Um, she looked a little bit like fatigue might not be the right word and everything like that, but she just, she just seemed like, you know, this is a real big concern for, for her and her team, not only where it is right now, but where it could possibly go. Did you get that impression? Yes. I mean, uh, she says exhausted, right? The healthcare workers are exhausted. Uh, and I think one thing, we again, no confirmed cases on Rodentinium, but one thing that was talked about yesterday, right, is that Saipan is where the only hospital is for the CNMI. Yeah. And so uh, we had Senator uh, Jude Hofschneider from Tinian, Tinian on yesterday. Um, travel still happens between uh, within the CNMI, and so that's obviously a concern, but uh, the task force chair, Warren Villa Gomez, says that uh, they are going to, uh, they continue to meet with the leaders of Rhoda and Tinian. Um, but this is uh, happening uh, amid the holidays, and yeah. Yeah. I think uh, one of the things the CEO said is that uh, we have to really be cautious, especially in our yeah. gatherings this holiday. Yeah. Uh, and unfortunately, that's coming around. Right, our Tomas. Holiday gatherings. So, so, how would you characterize this uh, pivot? Because this is a hard pivot for the NMI to go from uh, basically COVID free paradise to the um, situation they're in now, right? Yeah, the health officials say that uh, it was almost inevitable. Uh, COVID is, and as we've seen, continues to uh, mutate and and uh, appear in different ways. And uh, I 
think one thing that also was emphasized was that the contact tracers are doing their work, right? Of the of the uh, 496 that were identified since October 28th, half of those were found through contact tracing, phone calls, talking with people. And But another thing she also mentioned was that uh, she encourages everyone to give uh, honest answers when they're called. Um, they're also finding that sometimes not the full picture is being given when someone is called and they're asked to be contact traced. Uh, and so uh, that's also another message that's coming out. I, I also, uh, they can't emphasize enough the importance of boosters, especially if it's after six months uh, of receiving your second dose. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the the response to COVID very much um, alive here in the CNMI and uh, we haven't received the numbers from yesterday, uh, so we might get that uh, at some point this morning, maybe. But um, coming from uh, Esther Munya herself saying that uh, at this point, asking about clusters is not productive because it's widespread. Yeah. So, so, so uh, Tomas, what has this done um, to the proceedings that were underway? Uh, the proceedings uh, involving the allegations um, made um, by by uh, the JGO uh, relative to uh, Governor Torres' um, alleged questionable spending of public funds? Yeah, the work at the three branches of government continues. Uh, the uh, upcoming hearings um, are still uh, scheduled. Uh, we understand from the chair, uh, Selena Babata, uh, that um, in particular, the uh, officer, uh, Janika Atalig, um, they, they've decided to dismiss her from uh, the subpoena. And so um, this is something that they were saying that they want an opportunity to focus on the remainder of the witnesses that will be called to testify in the near future. Um, it, it is uh, noteworthy to mention that um, Governor Torres has yet to be uh, served his subpoena to appear before the legislative committee. And also um, that they also told us separately that they plan to wrap up the hearings by the end of this year. And obviously we're reporting this week, Governor Torres is supposed to release a second video in a series addressing the allegations head on. The first video that he released uh, was regarding his utility bills in the thousands. Not sure what the second video will be, uh, but we will, we're also at the first veteran town, town hall that he held last night uh, with veterans. So um, lots of updates within uh, from both of those ends, but uh, we're, we'll continue to wait and see uh, how the hearings unfold in the next few weeks. Uh, what was the turnout for the veterans uh, town hall meeting? Yeah, it was uh, every seat they had there was used. And so there were over a dozen people there. I would say uh, maybe two or three dozen people there. Um, both the governor and lieutenant governor attended. Both of them spoke. Um, and we'll have more tonight on primetime veteran sharing some really um, you know, powerful messages and their, uh, their calls for help. Um, some of them having just moved to the island in the last year, realizing the inequity in the care that they might be receiving here and the access that they have. Uh, lots of moving testimony last night and the next uh, Veterans Town Hall will be on December 6th at the Tanapa Youth Center, I believe. And they're also in the coming months planning to bring the Veterans Town Hall to Rhode Island. Uh, and of course, all of this happening amid this uh, COVID surge that we're experiencing in the CMI. All right, thanks a lot, Tomas. Thank, Thank you, you Tomas. Just last question here uh, for a friend. Has the uh, surge affected the production of the blueberry cream cheese bread at all? <laughs> no, no, Chris. I believe uh, those are still out for shipment. Um, okay. But uh, as uh, on that note, um, I think in talking with the community members here, um, you know, everyone uh, trusts each other and are and 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 want to get through the surge, and uh, and so um, we're 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 gonna continue to bring you the latest on that as well. Thank you, Tomas. I just realized one yeah. thing, Jason guys. Solace, the four, ladies and gentlemen, of the four of us in the Zoom room, uh, somebody is making a fashion faux pas. One of us in Zoom does not have the KUM Care Force Giving Tuesday shirt on. <laughs> I, I did not grab my, it before I left. We FedExed it to you. Did you not get the package? No, no. I, did you not see one of those? Uh, did you see that news about the FedEx boxes being dropped in the middle of some forest in the States? Maybe Oy. you got Maybe, maybe you got, your shirt's maybe, there. Maybe ended up there. <laughs> yeah. Well, we, we, got your, we got your gear when you come back here. Okay. Yeah, Thanks, we got James. you a medium, Tomas. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thanks. 
Uh, 754. Good morning. Miss a link, miss a lot. Don't miss it. Now I told you guys don't miss it. Our Giving Tuesday extravaganza is about less than 40 minutes away. Right. So, uh, guys, if you have a donation, we're open 8 to 2 here at the KUAM Studios in Harmon. Uh, the Care Force has all had their coffee. They've taken their vitamins. They're ready to receive you guys here. So swing by anytime during those hours. And we've got a great big live show and a whole bunch of stuff happening uh, for you guys this morning on this Giving Tuesday, November 30th, uh, 2021. Mm-hmm. And we also want to thank all of our community partners that um, made donations that we're going to be providing to our frontliners. Uh, we've got Guam Bakery, American Bakery, Papa John's, um, GTA, APL. Uh, so just thank you so much for your generosity. And, Very re- much. and remember, like Bree was saying earlier in the show, if you are doing something, you, you don't have to be a big Fortune 500 company or, you know, like a 9,000 person operation. You and your and your family, you and your sibling, you and your churchmate can yeah. be doing yeah. something today to celebrate and participate in Giving Tuesday. Just just DM us. Let yeah. us know. We saw we that last year. You. We saw that last year, Jay, where we did have the, you know, some of the community orgs coming through. Uh, but then we also saw uh, families coming with their kids. Kids wanted to really, like, hand over yeah. Uh, the donation. So. You could just be standing at the side of the road today for five minutes and have like a big, you know, like a heart sign and just say happy giving Tuesday. That's totally cool too. Yeah. You're making yep. somebody's day. Post it and tag us. Yeah. Uh, 756. Yeah. And, and just real quickly, I wanted to um, just acknowledge uh, this Giving Tuesday, Joy FM. Uh, they're actually doing a special project for the inmates uh, and detainees over at the Department of Corrections. They're going to be delivering a care packages uh oh yeah to them i believe it might be today yeah um, i saw this what's in the care packages uh calendars granola bars wholesome books dvds uh lots of great magazines um they've also received a postcard inviting them to write uh to them to learn more about god's love for them very nice nice and I, b- I believe joy 92 they've got a very strong uh, prison ministry existing that they do so good good work by them right on well done uh seven seven fifty seven we're gonna take a quick break guys and i'm gonna head out okay but the link continues hey, and I'll, the road, bro. I'll be joining you guys uh from the south yes taggy south okay guys if you see me out and about you got a donation wave me down i'll stop and I'll, I'll pick it up i got a whole route i'm doing all the south i'll be in the i-94 uh the breeze van okay can't miss me you see me coming uh, 758 again. Uh, we're KUAM FM. I got any Guam. This is the link. Pacific Points, Cowboy Enterprises, ITN, and Jack in the Box. Good morning. It's Eight time to save on shipping. Out. Support our local entrepreneurs. Find the best steals, deals, and unique products for your holiday shopping needs. The Christmas Pops Virtual Holiday Marketplace is your hub for the best local gifts. Watch the Christmas Pops special airing through December 11th and streaming now across the stations and platforms of KUAM Communications. Visit KUAMChristmasPops.com and be on the lookout for local business profiles on our social media pages. Shop small and support local this holiday season. Presented by UOG School of Business and Public Administration, JA Guam, inspiring youth, and the Guam Visitors Bureau, making Guam a better place to live, work, and visit. year, Giving Tuesday falls on November 30th. And though our community is still facing some of the most challenging of times, there's no better time. To volunteer, donate, spread awareness, and do whatever you can to help those in need. Let's continue to build a wave of generosity that creates a ripple effect for all in our community. Throughout the month of November, Team KUAM Care Force will be showcasing some of our favorite charities. To inform, inspire, and introduce you to the wonderful things these groups are doing for our community. We're also calling on you to donate to our food pantry and toy drive to benefit the Salvation Army at our KUAM studios. Any weekday between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. starting on November 1st. Or stop by our second annual donation drive through event on November 30th. You can also visit our studios to sign our kindness for caregivers wall to show our healthcare workers our appreciation. So be a giver and join the KUAM Care Force this year in making a difference this Giving Tuesday. Giving Tuesday 2021 is presented in partnership with our community partner, APL. Better ways. 
The relationship between Guam and Manila, Philippines is undeniable as we share similar cultural traditions, history, and heritage. With generations of Filipinos calling Guam home, KUAM presents a monthly look at the capital city, featuring in-depth and engaging interviews on everything from medical tourism to new business and government leaders. Veteran newscaster Nestor Lecanto delivers Beyond Our Borders. This special program is brought to you by KFC. Do you feel like you're missing out on something? Make life more rewarding with Pacific Points. Earn and redeem points for bill rebates and free load at ITE, discounts on fuel at Shell, vouchers at Foodies, and United Mileage Plus Miles. You can even pay with Pacific Points at ITE, Shell, and Foodies. Pacific Points. Do more. Get more. GU Self Storage, conveniently located near the Harmon McDonald's. We offer affordable rates, online payments, and auto bill pay for your convenience. Plus, gate access daily from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. Call us today at 648-7867 for more information. Mariana's Irrigation and Landscape Superstore. Stop on by and visit our showroom today. We offer everyday low prices on all major outdoor power equipment like bush cutter, chainsaw, power washer, generators, and more. Need service, repair, maintenance? Well, check out Guam's best superstore only at Mariana's Irrigation and Landscape, located in Barragata along Army Drive between Submarina and Besta Market. Call 735-7446 for more information. Now shipping to surrounding islands. Mariana's Irrigation and Landscape Superstore. Get the job done the right way by getting the right stuff at East West Rental Center. With years of experience helping builders, we definitely got what you need. Call 646-1463 or visit us in Upper Tumon. Open Monday to Saturday from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. and on Sundays from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Half a day. This is Governor Lou Leon Guerrero. If you're struggling to pay rent and utilities because of the pandemic, your government can help. Our Emergency Rental Assistance Program provides direct relief to you. To date, over $6.9 million has helped over 1,500 households. Apply online at doa.guam.gov or call the Department of Administration's Emergency Rental Assistance Program at 671-638-4518 or 19. Say hello to the First Hawaiian Bank mobile app. Got a question about your finances? you've come to the right place. Bring all your accounts together, even those that aren't with us, and see the big picture, right down to the smallest detail. Unlock powerful tools like Insights and Money Map that help you save time and take control of your finances. When you connect accounts with the First Hawaiian Bank mobile app, it all starts with yes. Catch Sports Link on the KUAM News Morning Show, The Link, every Friday for the latest sports news, game schedules, athlete profiles, and more. Sports Link airs every Friday across the multi platforms of KUAM. Tune in to the broadcast on Breeze 93.9 FM on KUAM TV 11, live stream through the KUAM News Facebook page, or view highlights on YouTube, KUAM News Facebook, and Instagram page. Sports Link is brought to you by Marianas Irrigation and Landscape. KUAM's multi-platform morning show, The Link, just got a little more delicious with Feed Me Fridays. Chris, Sabrina, Jason, and the rest of the morning crew will take some time off each Friday to talk, taste, and tempt you with all the latest and greatest food and drinks on Guam. Old faves, new hits, and everything else we can put in our bellies. It's Feed Me Fridays on The Link, brought to you by King's Restaurants, Ruby Tuesday Guam, and Bevendale. Real milk from free grazing cows. The KUAM Podcast Network is back and on demand, featuring a great variety of podcasts from our island and region, including culture, lifestyle, awareness, crime, politics, commentary, comedy, and entertainment. Available on most streaming platforms. The KUAM Podcast Network. Subscribe and listen now. Matanani taking over for Chris Barnett. No, he did not go through reverse puberty. Carrying out the rest of the show with Sabrina Zalas Matanani. Okay. Oh, thank you. Thank you. 
it's still uh, still youthful. Right. <laughs> so, you know, as Ty mentioned, it is Giving Tuesday. Chris is making his way down to Mount Carmel uh, School in Agate, where they are making a generous donation. Ooh, that's um, a far drive. Yes, he's going to be uh, making his way there. Uh, they're going to do their presentation, so he's going to be collecting some of their donations uh, of canned goods and, and toys uh, that will go to the Salvation Army. Also, is going to be stopping by Custom Fitness, and then he's going to be delivering some care packages to our Southern mayors as part of the Giving Tuesday uh, campaign. Uh, and of course, you can participate. We're making it really easy for you. Just drop by. We're having our drive-through donation drive from 8 a.m. to 2 o'clock this afternoon, starting actually is it right now. That's right. So we have those two uh, those two soldiers in the front. I saw that coming up. They're so nice. The right. drive-through is open. And we hope we're to open see for you. Business. Yeah, we hope to see you uh, here. We're going to cut out of this show a little bit early because we're going to set up for our actual live uh, Giving Tuesday program which begins at 8 30 this morning with a resolution presentation from senator talina nelson from the guam legislature uh we're also going to be having several people stop by our studios uh, to make their uh, donation uh, different businesses we've got burger king coming in uh to make a contribution uh, we have uh, the chamber of commerce and the marines, the marines are that coming. are going to be stopping by several different people but we salvation army's coming by Yes, Salvation yeah. Army, because, of course, we're doing it all for them. And, and we hope to just see you uh, just stop by. Stop by your mom and pop store. Stop by a grocery store and just drop off uh, any kind of canned goods because there's a lot of people out in our community that need help, and especially children. So we hope to see you between 8 a.m. and 2 o'clock this afternoon. Yeah, and, I mean, if you, if you can, I mean, you know, more is obviously better. And, you know, if you can feed an entire family, that would be optimal. That would be fantastic. God bless you. But, you know, God bless you, too. If all you're able to do, if you just have, like, one tiny, like, little can of beans, a single serving size, that's going to make somebody's day. That may even save somebody's life. Right. And you are you are equally part of Giving Tuesday because this this isn't just a KOM promotion. It's all of Guam working together as one to take care of the people that need it most. Right. And uh, just speaking of assistance, before we get into the news, just another reminder that the Department of Administration <coughs> is uh, holding their Guam Emergency Rental Assistance Program. If you have any questions regarding ERA, this is a assistance that can help you with rent arrears, um, utilities and utility arrears, moving expenses, internet services. If you have any questions, please uh, give them a call. Their number is 671-638-4518. 671-638-4518 or 4519. You can also email them at era at doa.guam.gov. And if you didn't um, qualify the first time around, if you applied before, you can still try and apply again because your financial situation may have changed uh, from the first time you tried applying. Again, era at doa.guam.gov. You can also visit them at the ITC building in Tumuning. Moving on to news, we have a developing story in the CNMI. A 22-year-old man who is a resident of Guam died in quarantine at the Marianas Resort on Saipan on Monday. According to Department of Public Safety PIO Adrian Pangolinan, the case is still under investigation, but DPS says he arrived on island in Saipan on November 23rd. The investigation is pending until they are able to notify the next of kin. Once we have more information... We will, of course, pass it along. The Joint Information Center reports 15 people are now hospitalized with COVID, four receiving ICU level of care, one on a ventilator, seven vaccinated, eight unvaccinated. Public Health reports 16 more people tested positive for COVID. To date, there have been a total of 19,179 officially reported cases, 263 deaths. More than 1,600 people are in active isolation at this time, and there have been more than 17,000 recoveries. The CAR score is 0.8. As for vaccinations, as of November 28th, a total of 125,296 of Guam's eligible population, this is residents five years and older, have been fully vaccinated. And with more news now, here is Hannah Devonzo. This news update is brought to you by Pacific Points. Do more, get more. Hoffa and good morning everyone. I'm Hannah Devonzo with your headlines here on The Link. The Guam Department of Education welcomed back all grade level students enrolled in the face-to-face -face module of learning to a full week of in-person instruction, which the agency says was smooth sailing. KUA KUAM's Isaiah Uggen has this report. 
There were more than 26,000 Guam Department of Education students from pre-kindergarten through the 12th grade that walked back onto all 41 public school campuses for five days of in-person learning. Despite a shortage of 12 bus drivers and the wet weather, GDOE Interim Public Information Officer Michelle Franquez said in a Zoom interview with KUAM News that the first day of the resumption went well. Typically, according to Deputy Eric Cruz, we work with 100 buses, but we're instead now working with 88. But even if they had to double back, our students were able to be dropped off in time uh, before classes began. And so, uh, again, uh, some of our schools just said, other than the weather being really cold, uh, you know, they had a smooth uh early morning drop off for most part. GDOE's original plan was to have high school students return on Wednesday, December 1st for a full week of in-person instruction while elementary and middle schools by Monday, January 3rd. However, the Guam Education Board had a different plan. The GEB gave the green light last week Tuesday through resolution 2021-12, allowing all grade levels to return to classes full time today, November 29th, two days prior to the original plan. Franquez said the attendance rate for today was great. Well, overall, we had a well, with some of the reports coming in from uh, several of our schools, we had about a 75 to 85 percent attendance rate, which is pretty good uh, in, in, in general for our students who are attending school face to face. But according to KUAM News Archives, the attendance rate prior to the COVID-19 pandemic ranges from 90 to 92 percent. Meanwhile, GDOE is still expected to hold a community parent input session soon. I believe we're most likely going to schedule one as soon as we first get our input from all the schools and see what are some of the challenges that we are addressing. And of course, we want to make sure that when we have our parent input sessions, we're able to give, you know, uh, very important messages. GDOE noted students registered to the online model of learning will remain in the mode until the end of the school year. Reporting for Guam News Network, Guahu Siazia Agan. There are some revealing findings in a just-released report that examines the alarming number of COVID dead on arrival cases on Guam. We spoke with territorial epidemiologist Dr. Ann Pobetsky, who explains that the preliminary data shows clear trends and who were most susceptible to being a DOA case. It was all triggered by the deaths of a married couple in early July. They were pronounced dead on arrival at the hospital within a week of each other. And within a month, there were numerous other such DOA cases. It drew enough concern that even officials from the Centers for Disease Control have been brought in and continued to investigate. What's striking is that of the 119 COVID deaths from the four-month period from July 8th to November 19th, nearly 40%, 40% were dead on arrival cases. It's heavily skewing um, disproportionately with um, Pacific Islanders, uh, Micronesians, and especially Chukis. By sex, what we're seeing is it's heavily skewed towards males uh, for both dead on arrivals uh, and the non-dead on arrival cases, but even more so with the dead on arrivals. You know why men don't go to the hospital until it's too late or the doctor. By age, we're also seeing it's heavily skewing towards elderly people in both categories, the dead on arrival and non-dead on arrival cases. But there's more in the dead on arrival cases of middle-aged people, uh, 40 to 59. Most of the cases uh, in both instances are from the north our pop, most populated villages, but we see a slight difference with um, slightly more coming from the south with the dead on arrivals. Not sure why. But the biggest takeaway for Dr. Pobutsky? 82% of the dead on arrival cases were unvaccinated compared to 58% of the non-DOA cases. So that's a, definitely a risk factor. The data is just a preliminary look as the CDC team continues to look into the DOA phenomenon. We should get a lot more detail on this as this investigation unfolds in the next uh, couple of months. In the meantime, they're planning more outreach to increase COVID literacy among those who should get treatment but aren't. We had uh, two press conferences, at one at the end of August and one in early uh, mid, I'm sorry, uh, September to kind of alert the community about this because at the time, um, monoclonal antibody treatments were available at all of the hospitals and there's no reason, uh, I mean, people could get tr the treatment right away. For Guam's News Network, I'm Nestor Lacanto. Guam Police Department Acting Spokesperson Officer Berlin Sevilla confirms that a criminal complaint has been filed against Guam Police Department's Acting Police Commander, Major Manny Chung. The complaint was filed by a fellow GPD officer. Sevilla adds that it has been referred to the Office of the Attorney General's Office for their investigation. 
GPD Chief Stephen Ignacio declined to comment and referred all inquiries to OAG. KUAM reached out to the OAG and has yet to receive a response. As you may recall, it was last week when GPD issued a release that a staff officer was under investigation. GPD's internal affair opened an administrative investigation for alleged misconduct that occurred during the late night hours of November 11 in the Sagan y Pau Pau neighborhood in Dededo. Ignacio has coordinated with the AG's office to conduct a criminal investigation into this matter as well. And a quick programming note on Friday, December 3 at 7 p.m. on NBC TV 8, the holiday production of Annie Live will help kickstart this festive season. Here's more. My name is Selena Smith and I play Annie on Annie Live. I'm excited to be a part of a huge production, letting the world know that we are back. And we are here to lift your spirits up. It's going to be so fun being transported to a place that is magical and that we have the opportunity to do this fantastic musical on live TV. Being able to do the flips and the kicks and the tab dancing, just so excited. <laughs> it's part of life. Oh my gosh, I have the honor of playing the role of Grace Farrell. She is the chief of staff to Oliver Warbucks, and I can't wait for you all to see it. Annie, would you like to spend the next two weeks at Mr. Warbucks' house? I would love to. You can see from the sweat rehearsing real hard, playing Rooster. Easy stream. To me, Miss Hannigan is a character to really have fun with. Hold it, sister. Get out. Annie, I think, is going to be redefined by Selena. We love her. She's a light and cheery character. And I thought maybe being able to share the message to everybody and just put a smile on their faces, well, it just means the world. Daddy Warbucks has money and everything material, falls in love with her and wants to adopt her and take her away from the evil Miss Hannigan. You don't want Annie. She's a drunk and a liar. The best part is all of the departments putting our heads together to create the great Annie. The hardest part is going to be having to say goodbye. I am excited. <laughs> ah, ah, ah. I can't wait for the world to see the great talent that you are. Thank you. Again, Annie Live airs Friday, December 3 at 7 p.m. only on NBC TV 8. That's it for now. We'll see you tonight for KUAM's Primetime. This news update is brought to you by Pacific Points. Do more, get more. Okay, I've got to say, I did not know they were making an Annie Live. Well, Annie Live, that was that wasn't a Broadway thing. That was like a... They didn't even sing my favorite song. Well, it was nice. Dumb dog. That's what you are. You're a dumb dog. <laughs> That's a, my favorite. Do you remember the name of the dog in Annie? No. Sandy. Okay. Yeah. I can't wait to watch it though because I love Annie. Oh but my goodness. That was. I think that was one of. Uh, I mean, aside from Shirley Temple, Annie was what I grew up on. Mm. <sighs> wow. Oh, that Did you ever play Annie? Like, I can't remember. No. 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 no okay. I played Annie. You okay, would have been a good you Annie. You were. You were Mulan. Mulan. You were in Aladdin. Yeah. You're in a bunch of things. Okay. Your first was, uh, uh, first play was... That was like Reggie's. <laughs> yeah, Reggie's. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So they you killed me at the end. Yeah. It was you like, guys, what is this? Our drive through for Giving Tuesday is now open. Please come mm -hmm. to the KOM studios here in Harmon. We're across the street from Cost You Less. Any donation is gladly accepted. Thank you for helping our island community. And you know what really helps getting you through the day, especially when you're running around and doing Giving Tuesday stuff? Potassium. Mm. And you know what has a lot of potassium? Bananas. Banana. Banana. And as for tasting treats, because it is Tuesday here, our friends at Three Square gave us some amazing banana bread, which Brie is actually inhaling at this point. Hey. Because <laughs> it's so there. good. No, yes, I, I can smell it, it through it's my mouth. Delicious. It's what, how's moist. the texture? It's moist. It's really good. Mm. So you can visit oh. the Three Scores Marketplace. They're open from seven to seven a.m. to nine p.m. So they're open right now. If you guys want to check them out for this banana bread, I there's something about banana bread that just makes you feel you you don't feel like you're uh you're cheating a diet really. So you're like ah, you it's a banana. Eat that with food or as a dessert? Mm. As a dessert, too. I've I've had it I've had it with food too. I've had it with pasta or just. With no, pasta. no, 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 no. No, I've done that. I mean, mm -mm, okay, yeah. Aren't you the same person that said up 
What did you say yesterday? You said, yo, you said peanut butter on pizza. Yeah. That's weird. That's bizarre. Yeah, anyway, I, they don't sell peanut butter on pizza over <laughs> at um, or <laughs> Three Squares. But Not they yet. do sell the banana, banana bread. And that is a huge piece of banana bread. That, that's going to serve the entire family. Every, I mean, th- between the four of us in this room, we Great could to each bring have for three the holidays. pieces and we'd have some left. Right. It's perfect for the holidays. So as if you... Too. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely as a gift. So I, I need to try a piece of that. Yes. Bring some of a, that over here. They have pies there. They have Latiza. They have the chicken Kellogg. It's a family show here on the link. They Mother have and the daughter. Salmon. Mother and daughter sharing banana bread. Mm. Right. And so that's good. Three Squares Marketplace, um, Tuesday through Sunday from seven a.m. to nine p.m. And you can. Ha- they have all kinds of different um, foods, uh, healthy options. Uh, give them a call six seven one six four six two six five. Two. All right. And as as little orphan Annie said in the song, the sun will come out tomorrow, but the sun is out right now here in mm-hmm. Harmon and we are waiting for you. We want you to participate in Giving Tuesday. This only works if all of us do it together. So first of all, before we get into the festivities, the pomp, the circumstance, the fun, the family environment, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Guam, for giving us the honor and the privilege of being able to do this alongside you. Right, our We're drive, really humbled by this. Our drive through donation is from 8 o'clock. It's right now until 2 o'clock this afternoon. Our live show is beginning in about 10 minutes or so, and that's why we've got to cut out of this show so we can switch on over to our other show, our Giving Tuesday show. Plus, we got banana bread. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so thank you, everybody, and we hope to see you real soon. We'll see you in about 10 minutes. Okay. It's time to save on shipping. Support our local entrepreneurs. Find the best steals, deals, and unique products for your holiday shopping needs. The Christmas Pops Virtual Holiday Marketplace is your hub for the best local gifts. Watch the Christmas Pops special airing through December 11th and streaming now across the stations and platforms of KUAM Communications. Visit KUAMChristmasPops.com and be on the lookout for local business profiles on our social media pages. Shop small and support local this holiday season. Presented by UOG School of Business and Public Administration, J.A. Guam, Inspiring Youth, and the Guam Visitors Bureau, making Guam a better place to live, work, and visit. The relationship between Guam and Manila, Philippines is undeniable as we share similar cultural traditions, history, and heritage. With generations of Filipinos calling Guam home, KUAM presents a monthly look at the capital city, featuring in-depth and engaging interviews on everything from medical tourism to new business and government leaders. Veteran newscaster Nestor Lecanto delivers Beyond Our Borders. This special program is brought to you by KFC. GU Self Storage, conveniently located near the Harmon McDonald's. We offer affordable rates, online payments, and auto bill pay for your convenience. Plus, gate access daily from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. Call us today at 648-7867 for more information. Do you feel like you're missing out on something? Make life more rewarding with Pacific Points. Earn and redeem points for bill rebates and free load at IT&E, discounts on fuel at Shell, vouchers at Foodies, and United Mileage Plus Miles. You can even pay with Pacific Points at IT&E, Shell, and Foodies. Pacific Points. Do more, get more. Mariana's Irrigation and Landscape Superstore. Stop on by and visit our showroom today. We offer everyday low prices on all major outdoor power equipment like bush cutter, chainsaw, power washer, generators, and more. Need service, repair, maintenance? Well, check out Guam's best superstore only at Mariana's Irrigation and Landscape, located in Barragata along Army Drive between Submarina and Besta Market. Call 735-7446 for more information. Now shipping to surrounding islands. Mariana's Irrigation and Landscape Superstore. Get the job done the right way by getting the right stuff at East West Rental Center. With years of experience helping builders, we definitely got what you need. Call 646-1463 or visit us in Upper Tumon. Open Monday to Saturday from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. and on Sundays from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Half a day. This is Governor Lou Leon Guerrero. If you're struggling to pay rent and utilities because of the pandemic, 
your government can help. Our emergency rental assistance program provides direct relief to you. To date, over $6.9 million has helped over 1,500 households. Apply online at doa.guam.gov or call the Department of Administration's Emergency Rental Assistance Program at 671-638-4518 or 19. Say hello to the First Hawaiian Bank mobile app. Got a question about your finances? You've come to the right place. Bring all your accounts together, even those that aren't with us, and see the big picture right down to the smallest detail. Unlock powerful tools like Insights and Money Map that help you save time and take control of your finances. When you connect accounts with the First Hawaiian Bank mobile app, it all starts with yes. Catch Sports Link on the KUAM News Morning Show, The Link, every Friday for the latest sports news, game schedules, athlete profiles, and more. Sports Link airs every Friday across the multi platforms of KUAM. Tune in to the broadcast on Breeze 93.9 FM on KUAM TV 11, live stream through the KUAM News Facebook page, or view highlights on YouTube, KUAM News Facebook, and Instagram page. Sports Link is brought to you by Marianas Irrigation and Landscape. KUAM's multi-platform morning show, The Link, just got a little more delicious with Feed Me Fridays. Chris, Sabrina, Jason, and the rest of the morning crew will take some time off each Friday to talk, taste, and tempt you with all the latest and greatest food and drinks on Guam. Old faves, new hits, and everything else we can put in our bellies. It's Feed Me Fridays on The Link, brought to you by King's Restaurants, Ruby Tuesday Guam, and Bevendale. Real milk from free grazing cows. This year, Giving Tuesday falls on November 30th. And though our community is still facing some of the most challenging of times, there's no better time. To volunteer, donate, spread awareness, and do whatever you can to help those in need. Let's continue to build a wave of generosity that creates a ripple effect for all in our community. Throughout the month of November, Team KUAM Care Force will be showcasing some of our favorite charities. To inform, inspire, and introduce you to the wonderful things these groups are doing for our community. We're also calling on you to donate to our food pantry and toy drive to benefit the Salvation Army at our KUAM studios. Any weekday between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. starting on November 1st. Or stop by our second annual donation drive through event on November 30th. You can also visit our studios to sign our Kindness for Caregivers wall to show our healthcare workers our appreciation. So be a giver and join the KUAM Care Force this year in making a difference this Giving Tuesday. Giving Tuesday 2021 is presented in partnership with our community partner, APL. Better ways. Sangin untung unaman guai zatunu agu, 
Dangin paron magupas na anug na gimato mo Gagyaw na mamagugwaw mama dede si tayo kwini Sagwahaw na sa ano mi tagwini No izu kirida No izu no izu kirida Ikan na imuta ba'y gogot Gogot ya hasta gipena tayo No izu kirida No izu no izu kirida Ikan na imuta ba'y gogot Gogot ya hasta gipena tayo Hasta gipena tayo Hasta gipena tayo